Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Uh, my name is Lindsay Funtick, and I am the coordinator of volunteer ministries at Ashland First United Methodist Church. And every Thursday, I hop on here to share a little bit about what the Lord is teaching me and some of my devotional thoughts for this week. So welcome. Welcome to my new Ikea desk. I'm quite proud of it. We got a good deal. Um, uh, <laughs> it feels nice to have my own little space here. Um, First United Methodist, I'm going to also take this moment to remind you that tonight at 7 p.m. we have a Safe Sanctuaries training. So come on down and hang out with me. So this week, uh, I've had two verses really kind of swirling around in my head. And it feels like anytime I have a quiet moment, God is like, hey, ps, hey, ps. So I have these I have this little passage and it reminds me of when I was overseas. Um, I was really, really missing home. I was really struggling with, uh, yeah, like homesickness, um, wanting to be with my mom and dad, being in a, you know, a, a different place. Um, all of a sudden my perspective of the world was widening and shifting and that's a hard, that's a hard uh, kind of season to walk through. Really good, but really challenging. So I had some, thankfully, some really good guides along the way, and I had one particularly wise mentor who um, spoke these verses over me. So uh, these were my lifeline there, and I think they're a little bit of a lifeline now. So they're famous, they're solid, enjoy. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, and this is the NIV. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So, this passage is found within the larger context of our boy Paul uh, talking about basically in layman's terms, this is the Lindsay Funtick translation. Hey, I'm Paul. I have every reason to boast. I'm pretty awesome, but I've got this thing that annoys me to help keep me humble. He calls it his thorn in his side. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about how leaning on that weakness is how he experiences God. My grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. So what I have today is nothing revolutionary. Um, but I hope that it's encouraging and kind of along with this, I've been thinking about how when something sticks with us, when a verse or a passage present themselves to us and kind of won't leave our heads like a song stuck in our heads, um, we need to pay attention to that in our own lives. And I think it's also important to share. Um, one of the things that as I was preparing for today, I kind of just got the sense that the Lord I uh, want someone else to hear this too. Um, so if this message is for you, if this encouragement meditation is for you, um, my prayers go over you. Uh, I trust that um, uh, you know that you're not alone and just let me know how I can be thinking of you and praying for you. Uh, so as the Lord sees me, I've kind of come to this, some conclusions uh, based on this passage. So the first is that I am not above God's grace. Um, anyone who's had any sort of real encounter with Jesus or even has heard the story, has grown up in church, knows that human beings are in need of God's grace. That's kind of a, a, a basic tenet of, of the Christian faith. Uh, and I will admit that while I might give that lip service, um, I want to be a part of this elite group that doesn't actually need divine help. Like I can tell others about the divine help. I can tell others about how Jesus can make them strong. Um, but I personally would love to just get by on my own strength. Uh, and I know I'm not alone in that. Um, but I think that uh, if Paul, if the apostle Paul was not part of the spiritual elite, then I don't think it exists. I think that we all need that grace. So the first thing as we are kind of pondering this passage and our weaknesses, uh, just a kind of harsh reminder, we are not above God's grace. We need it. I need it. You need it. Uh, and the good news is that he has that grace abundant for us. So the second thing is we can be proud of where we are. 
on the journey. So I don't know about you, but the idea of boasting in my weaknesses, as Paul puts it, the idea of gathering a group in town square so I can shout from the roof, rooftops that, you know, I'm anxious and a perfectionist and I can be jealous. Um, I just did it, but I didn't like it. So th those are things that don't appeal to us uh, just as human beings. Um, but I think in this passage, it shows that it's more powerful to choose our weaknesses over proclaiming false strength. Um, Paul, or Paul says that uh, when he boasts about his weakness, it's so that Christ's power might rest on him. And even though I don't want to boast about my weaknesses, somehow uh, that's how we receive Christ's power when we acknowledge that we need him. And so I want that. I want Christ's power to rest on me. And so I want to follow in Paul's footsteps. It says, when we choose weakness, when we uh, boast about our weaknesses, um, we can feel that power. We can experience God in a way that we wouldn't be able to if we didn't admit that we had said weaknesses. So you're not above God's grace and you can be proud of where you are on the journey. You can shout it from the rooftops because God is greater than where you are. And finally, the third thing is it's all about Jesus anyway. Uh, I, I think that, again, this is another thing that's really easy to give lip service to because we're like, yeah, it's all about glorifying the Lord. Um, but that's really easy to say in good times, right? Um, but Paul shows that somehow when our weaknesses are on display, when we are able to delight in such things as uh, persecutions, hardships, for Paul it was, you know, shipwrecks, martyrdom, these things that he was able to rejoice while facing because when our weaknesses are on display, it's for the sake of the gospel. Uh, it is for Christ's sake. So when I tell you that I am weak and that I'm broken and that I am in need of God's grace, that highlights God's grace all the more. When I say I don't need, or when I say that I need God, that shows the power of God. And so we can follow along with Paul in this and boast about our weaknesses because when we do so, it naturally leads into saying how God fills in those gaps. Um, God brings life to those dark places. We can boast in those weaknesses and face them boldly because we don't face them alone and because Christ is more powerful. So with all of that, I kind of, I really want to leave us with the benediction today, uh, along with Paul following in his footsteps as, as this whole, um, kind of train of thought ends. When we are weak, then we are strong. I don't like that. I don't think I'm alone in not liking that. But when I step into that, when I have faith in that truth, that is where transformation happens. When we are weak, then we are strong. And that is because of Jesus who is with you, who loves you, and who strengthens you. So, with that, First United Methodist Church, I love you. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. Uh, for all who have tuned in or who will watch this, uh, I pray this blessing over you that you would know that when you are weak, you are strong in Christ. Uh, that's all we need. We need that grace and it is sufficient. So friends, have a really good Thursday and I look forward to seeing you all very soon.